Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this third session of regular talks on the fair and sustainable use of marine resources. For this first morning session, we will have two talks. The first one, abundance and body size of parrot fishes, Scarus and Sparisoma, at the Seaflower Biosphere Reserve, a characterization. If this talk will be presented by Natalia Rivas from Universidad Nacional de Colombia. And our second talk will be genetic status and connectivity of Sparisoma orofrenatum in the South Caribbean, presented by Dana Velasco from Universidad del Valle. <coughs> so please remember that the dynamics of our regular talks will be as follows. First, our speaker will have 15 minutes for her talk, and then we will have a Q&A session of 10 minutes. And if you would like to submit a question, please refer to the bottom of your screen to the Q&A button and send your questions there so we can escalate it to our speaker and answer them at the end of the session. Uh, so with this in mind, please uh, let's give a welcome to Natalia Rivas. And she will start his, her talk in just one second. Okay, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Natalia Rivas and today I'm going to present you part of the research uh, conducted with Professor Arturo Cero Pizarro uh, and financed by the Rupert Foundation and Con Conciencias. Uh, today's presentation is entitled Abundance and Body Size of Parrot Fishes, Scarus and Sparisoma at the Seaflower Biosphere Reserve, a characterization. Mm, okay. Uh, so, uh, coral reefs deterioration around the world is associated with, uh, with a loss of complexity and an increase in algae cover. Um, a reverse in coral reefs uh, have an essential role as controllers of that algae cover. And uh, in uh, coral reefs of the Caribbean region, parrot fishes and surgeon fishes are the main rivers. Uh, therefore, it is of concern the increasing overfishing over these uh, two groups, especially of parrot fishes, uh, which is uh, associated with a reduction of corals, uh, of the ability of corals to maintain their dominance in the ecosystems and therefore the, um, the resilience after disturbances. In the Colombian Caribbean, we have four general parrot fishes. Escarus and Esparisoma hold the uh, largest and most threatened species uh, of the bunch. Uh, in the last version of the Colombian Red Book of Marine Fishes, uh, out in 2017, uh, five species of uh, parrot fishes were um, catalogued, three as endangered, Escarus uh, celestinus, Escarus ceruleus, and Escarus guacamaya, and two as near threatened, Escarus betula and Esparisoma viride. Uh, the study um, is, um, had or taken into account uh, 11 uh, species or the 11 species of parrot fishes that are uh, distributed in coral reefs of the Seaflower Biosphere Reserve. So uh, the three large body of the species that I already mentioned that are catalogued as endangered, uh, four medium body of species, two of them as near threatened, and in addition, Esparisoma chrysopterum, Esparisoma rubrifine, and um, Four small species, Scarus tenefterus, Scarus iseri, Sparisoma aurofrenatum, and Sparisoma atomarium. Uh, for the, in the method, uh, so we evaluate four sites of the Seaflower Biosphere Reserve. The two main islands that are apart uh, from each other 90 kilometers, and the two southern caves, Bolivar and Albuquerque, that are 25 and 37 kilometers away from San Andres, uh, respectively. Um, Albuquerque was the sample during the Seaflower scientific expedition to the island. And uh, well, we evaluate 16 stations per locality, and the stations were uh, selected to be similar in terms of depth and substrates evaluated. Uh, the surveys took place between September and November 2018. As I told you, in Albuquerque, um, uh, we evaluated it during the scientific expedition to the, to the case. And uh, we use diver operated stereo video technique as sampling technique along 30 minutes of air and diver uh, time swims. Uh, so basically the stereo video is, um, I don't know if you're seeing my, this little thing. Yes, we can. 
Okay. So uh, basically, this uh, the stereo video is a system of uh, two cameras that are separated at known distance and that have an inward degree between them. And uh, the system needs to be calibrated um, beforehand, uh, the surveys uh, in the pool. Uh, for the, with the video collected, uh, we did the video processing with the software event measure. Uh, to uh, cat uh, catalog the or identify the each individual to the level of a uh, species. Uh, we use the uh, online guide of Robertson et al. in 2015. And we calculate uh, for each of the individuals, the, um, when possible, the total length, which was calculated from the tip of the mouth to the medium uh, projection of the caudal lobes. And basically what the, um, program does is uh, using once the the images of both cameras are are synchronized the software uh, uses the calibration archive to uh, basically triangulate and uh, calculate the distance between any two points that I select in both images so for the data analysis, abundance and body sizes were compared among the localities. Uh, we used the uh, R and uh, R Studio, the softwares, statistical softwares, to contrast the two variables uh, between the localities. And we used the test of ANOVA, Kuskal, Wallis, and Bootstrap, depending on the fulfillment of the assumptions of normality and homoelasticity. So as general results, uh, over 6,000 individuals were recorded. Uh, the most common species uh, were Escarus iseri, Escarus denioptelus, Esparisoma oropenatum, and Esparisoma uh, viride. The four species were observed uh, in every single station of every locality. So they were the most common ones. And in here we have the ones that were not that common. Of course, the three uh, largest, larger uh, body species are uh, in danger as well. So as you can see, the sightings of this species was very low. And um, in the case of Escarus guacamaya and Escarus ceruleus, they were only observed in the uh, Providencia stations. And uh, 10 out of the 11, uh, of the 19 species observed uh, of Escarus celestinus were also observed in, in Providencia. So uh, overall, uh, what we uh, find with this species is that, is that their population are really uh, reduced in the localities we evaluate. And uh, this is a, it's an alert, especially for Scarus guacamaya in San Andres. San Andres holds the largest uh, mangrove extension, extension of the reserve. So, uh, and Scarus guacamaya uh, uh, use the mangrove as a recruitment uh, habitat. Uh, well, in addition, Esparisoma chrysopterum and Esparisoma rubrifine also presented uh, low abundances uh, or low registers. So we didn't compare these two species between the, the localities because we didn't have like the uh, sufficient sample size. And in the case of Esparisoma atomarium, uh, we did have a, a decent sample size, but it didn't uh, show any difference between the localities. We found a, a difference uh, in the abundance of uh, Sparisoma uh, viride. It presents uh, less abundance in San Andres compared to Providencia. From the total number of uh, parrot fishes observed in San Andres, this species represented an 8.7%, while the, from the total uh, parrot fishes observed in Providencia, the species represent a 17.1%. So basically for each uh, station, uh, an average of 20 individuals were observed in Providencia, while an average of uh, 10, 11 uh, individuals were observed in uh, San Andres. Regarding the body sizes, we did find, um, well, we calculate the total length of over 5,000 individuals, and we did find a significant difference in these five species. So I'm gonna show you what we find in each one. Escarus vetula presented a smaller sizes, significantly smaller sizes in San Andres compared to Providencia as well. Esparisoma viride, again, smaller sizes in San Andres compared to the other three localities. Esparisoma oroprenatum, difference between Providencia and San Andres, bigger sizes in Providencia. 
And in the case of Escarus Ciceri and Escarus Tenioptorus, uh, opposite patterns, so uh, larger sizes in San Andres compared to Bolivar and Providencia for Escarus Ciceri, and uh, larger uh, body sizes in San Andres compared to Providencia and Albuquerque for Escarus Tenioptorus. So, in conclusion, uh, we found a great spatial variation of pirate fishes in the seaflower biosphere reserve, even at the short distances that the study evaluate. Um, um, the results found for Escarus betula and Esparisoma viride are consistent uh, with those uh, of former students. Uh, as we did, those studies found a less abundant abundance of Esparisoma viride and less individual body weights of Esparisoma viride and Escarus betula. Uh, and uh, they found this uh, at higher fishing pressure. And uh, data gathered by the Secretary of Agriculture and, and Fisheries uh, between 2005, 2005 and 2015 show a trend of greater extraction of both species in San Andres compared to Providencia. So we also believe that uh, the results obtained are related with a higher extraction of both the species in San Andres. And furthermore, we present a characterization of our fish populations with quantitative and replicable data of body sizes and abundances at four sites of the seaflower biosphere reserve. So we present uh, elements to continue the monitoring of the populations and uh, the recognition of the factors that influence the spatial variation that we found. Uh, we thank all the people involved in the project, the granting and the academic uh, institutions involved, and uh, to you uh, for being here today. Thank you. Thank you, Natalia, for your wonderful talk. So now we will open the question sessions and I will start reading the questions. If you feel that you want to answer in Spanish, that's okay. I will do my best to translate or Olga can help us as well. So feel free to answer in English or in Spanish as, as, as comfortable you feel with your language. So we'll have here a first question from Maria Camargo and she's asking, how accurate is the novel technique you use when compared to the conventional, conventional visual senses? Could it be assumed that the later underestimate fish abundance? Yeah, so, okay. Um, there have been works that compare the, the accuracy of, those, of, of both techniques, uh, but with the calculation of body sizes. So it, it has been found that a, the body sizes are more accurate when uh, calculated with the stereo video than when they, uh, they are calculated with the visual uh, senses. senses. But um, I don't know if there's any study in the abundance, uh, with the abundance. Uh, however, I wouldn't dare to say that uh, necessary with a visual senses, you are underestimating uh, the the number of uh, fishes. Um, I would say that with a, any of the uh, both techniques, you can either underestimate or overestimate the, the number of fishes. And I think that uh, the accurate of, of both things there uh, depends on a, uh, different things. For example, in the stereo video, I would say it depends more on how meticulous or how careful the person is to actually uh, count an individual as a different one and, not, and you know, to not quite count bo uh, twice the same individuals. Uh, uh, but you have like a lot of tools to try to avoid this error. So you have, a, um, you can go back and forth in the video, you can try to find uh, something in the color pattern. Uh, and you can always as well compare uh, how different the the body sizes uh, are being, uh, that are calculated. So you can use a lot of things to actually uh, try to different, uh, differentiate or, or know if it's a new or, or the same individual. Uh, while with the visual uh, senses, I think that it depends more on the level of 
uh, expertise that uh, has the person that is doing the, the census. So, yeah, I don't know if I answered that. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. So here we have another question. Uh, do you know if there are substantial difference on reproduction among big versus small species? On reproduction? Yeah, so the thing I will try to explain here. So the thing is, do you think that perhaps differences in abundance can not only be related to human impact, but also to natural, you know, natural uh, differences as reproduction? So for example, big fish, they have less eggs or something like that. And if you know something about that across the whole species. Well, normally the bigger the species, like the, the is lower the, the reproductive rate or something like that. I mean, I would say that with the abundance, there's a lot of like more different factors that can influence that. So with the abundance, I do, I do think that there's other things to have in mind, but um, I guess here uh, the strong point uh, is given by the body sizes. So the body sizes are the are really um, linked to a, a fishing a context. Uh, so yeah, with the with the abundance, uh, it's been found that larger species have like um, um, menos cantidad de <laughs> So, so Natalie is saying that it's, it's been found that larger species have less amount of, of eggs and gametes. So that might be also something to take into account and not, not only fishing pressure, but fishing pressure substantially reduce larger species. See? Yeah, and um, but also you need to have into account that uh, the difference were found like between the localities. So, uh, I mean, I would expect like a similar, uh, yeah, I wouldn't expect that that difference. And if you have in mind uh, the, the difference that we found uh, in the abundance, especially uh, specifically in the, in the site where um, there have been found a, a larger capture. So, well, I would think I would think that fishing pressure is like the the most um, parsimonious mm -hmm. uh, explanation. But yeah, of course, I think that there must be some other factors involved. Thank you very much. And here is another question that is related to that one as well. So it is how do you res how do your results compare to previous studies on parrotfish abundance if they are, and could you find like older records in the literature of how these fish were more abundant or the same, let's say fifty years ago or something? Yeah, well, with in, in the evaluation that uh, the scientists did for the catalog of the species in the Red Book, uh, the Colombian Red Book of Marine Fishes. They uh, use a different, uh, um, the monitoring of different stations in the Providencia and San Andres, and they compare like the different results of abundance in the last 10 years. And uh, this is one of the reasons why, why they chose fishing pressure as the um, explanation to uh, found a, a, a gradual uh, descent of the abundances of the big large uh, of the large sizes uh, species in time so it has been found that and do you know if there are like ecological studies like not related to the red book i don't know maybe done in the 60s or 70s or something to how to maybe help you have an idea of how abundant the big fishes were, or there is nothing, nothing that can be found on the Caribbean, at, at least. Well, the studies. Um, I don't know if I can share again. So, let me. Yeah. Okay. So, sorry. Here, for example. 
uh, basically a lot of studies are more of a spatial scale. So what they've done, for example, Vages and Oxenford in 2014, they evaluate 14 locations in the Great Caribbean and they uh, um, classify the localities uh, in fishing pressure. So uh, Belize, for example, or Bonaire normally are um, like more protected areas and uh, there's less fishing pressure in those areas. While, for example, Jamaica is a, an island with a very strong uh, fishing pressure. And those studies have found a less abundance a, in the localities with a higher fishing pressure a, than a, in the localities with less fishing pressure as Bonaire and Belize. And they found that uh, Badges and Oxenford with abundances and with uh, individual body weight, Hawkins and Roberts in, in 2007 with the um, abundance of um, the large body species and the um, species in terminal, in terminal phase. So uh, the, the largest of the fraction of the population um Hawkins and Robert as well, they, uh, they found um, less abundance in the, uh, at higher fishing pressure. So I would say that the, most of the, uh, of the articles or the works that are in, related to that are more in a spatial scale. Yeah, yeah. I think the question was more, most, mostly directed to see, let's say, if there were census in San Andres, back in the 80s or something that you can have a number of how how much abundance of parrot fishes were present at that time compared to today that's mostly a thing i mean i would say yeah but <laughs> but i'm i'm not sure of that i know the the ones that they use for the for the book that they compare and they show the the progressive decline but i don't know if, if back in the 80s but i i guess it is. Maybe you know. Uh, Olga, do you think we have time for one more question or we are good in? You guys can keep going for now. Okay, thank you. Natalia, que pena. Otra, another question. So, can you please explain again what do you think is happening with the size change across the islands and why do you think there are two patterns? Oh. Okay, again, I'm gonna share. So in here, you can see a little bit more clear. So we have the medium body species, small bodies, small bodies in, in the San Andres, for the two small, uh, medium bodies, Farisoma viri and Escarus betula. And we have like the opposite thing for the small body species. So larger species, uh, larger bodies in San Andres compared to the other localities. Yeah, okay, so that's, that's one pattern, right? Like having these two species bigger in San Andres compared to Providencia, but then you have the opposite on other species, like you have bigger specimens on Providencia compared to San Andres. So I think the question is related to those two patterns. Why do you think it's happening that way and not like a general pattern across the island? Okay, so maybe... that is, um, um, okay, I didn't want to get into that because it's a lot of things, but okay, so... Um, Speculation is fine. Yeah, basically, uh, like I show you with the medium body species, it is apparent that it's been found to be related with fishing pressure, but none previous study were, have found like this difference in the body sizes uh, of these species. Uh, so it's hard to know, but also uh, no previous study were, had used this technique. So um, what we think that can happen is um, Jomar in the 2015, found that these four species have an overlap in the trophic niche. So uh, what we think that may happen is that in San Andres, that is the locality where these two species are uh, being extracted, um, 
there might be a, a possibility that these small species that share the resources of the larger one uh, can have like a positive um, um, a positive I don't know the word yeah yeah I think yeah, can, like it can, they can get uh, beneficiated somehow by the extraction of the larger species because they can now access to their uh, resources that were limited before. So that's what we think. But again, it's, it needs further explanation. Yeah, but that 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 pattern is really really interesting. Um, let me see if I have another question down here. So can you tell us if, how much data do you have to waste with this technique? I mean, you're recording and then you get some fishes that you cannot measure. Is there like a, an estimate of how amount of videos or individuals are you losing or something? So, um the total numbers that uh, we count was 6,600. And the ones that we were able to measure were 5,200. So that is 94%, I believe that one. I mean, it's, it's a great deal, but uh, the majority of cases that were, we were not able to, um, to calculate the size was um, because we weren't able to find an image where we could see the individual, the, the, the whole individual in both images. So we couldn't like uh, actually put the two, uh, um, signals in both images. So that's why we didn't, we weren't able to do that. And that, yeah, that, that, that is like the, the number of fishes that we weren't able to, to measure. But I think it's a very good uh, number, you know, 5,200 out of 6,600 six, uh, 6, is, is a lot. You yeah, have a great. lot of, of information. And also you have like these videos that you can use for, I don't know if now I want to know something about surgeon fishes, I can go back to those videos and, and have that information. So I think there is a, a great tool and like you have a great archive in there. Yeah, I think it's a great, great step. And it also stopped that swimming with that PVC tube to start guessing the size of the fishes and you know, having a lot of creepy data. Okay, so we have yeah. two more questions here. Okay. So this question is from Fernando Zapata. And the question is, have you looked at the correlation between abundance and body size and how that varies between localities? The correlation between abundance and body size and how they... Varies between localities. I guess this question is related with the, tape, with the figure that you just uh, show us. Maybe you can put it again and see if... Have, uh, so I'll repeat the question. Have you looked at the correlation between abundance and body size and how that varies between localities? Uh, I don't know if I understand what well. you, you're saying that, yeah. This one you mean? I, I, I think that, I mean, I think that figure can answer the question. But look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask it in Spanish. It's in English, but I'm gonna ask it in Spanish, so maybe. Okay. La pregunta dice, ¿has mirado la correlación entre la abundancia y el tamaño y cómo varía entre localidades? O sea que yo creo que esta es, aquí está solamente el tamaño, pero la abundancia está en el numerito. Pero es la correlación entre abundancia y tamaño. Eh, if Fernando is, is here, is there, I guess, he can just try to make the question in Spanish or expand a little, a little further. We have time so that would be fine is that Here's fernando you. is that fernando zapata yes fernando zapata hi estás en la lista de participantes eh, levante tu mano si quieres aclarar tu pregunta si sí, si sí, te puedo habilitar a hablar yo te veo aquí eh, ya te voy a permitir 
ok, ya, ya levantaste esto, es como estás diciendo que sí, ya te permití hablar, ya te mandé la solicitación para prender el micrófono, ahora estás live. Hola, Fernando. Hi, Fernando. Fernando, hello. Hello, hello. No se escucha. Ah, bueno. Fernando, si ¿sí puedes escribir porque no te estamos escuchando. Tienes micrófono prendido, pero no te estamos escuchando. Ok, entonces, Fernando, si quieres escribir en el chat aclaración de la pregunta, ya lo puedo pasar a, a los... A, a Natalia para preguntar, porque hasta ahora no te podemos escuchar. Ok. Bueno, si quieres, mientras, mientras Fernando eh, manda la pregunta, podemos pasar con la siguiente. Can we go for the yeah, further question and then we'll, we'll come back to Fernando when we, when we reach. Perfect. Fernando, te voy a escribir en interno. Listo. You guys can continue. Thank you, Olga. Uh, Natalia, entonces, we have another question here. It's made in Spanish, all reading in Spanish, and then I will translate it in English, and you can feel free to, to, to answer as you wish. So it's regarding the old data, the information is valuable, the social information is valuable, and how in taking into account people who data, who dated abundance of parafishes in the island year before, especially Guilambuo. So, dice, respecto a los datos antiguos, es valiosa la investigación social y tener en cuenta anécdotas que datan la abundancia de peces loro en la isla años atrás, especialmente ese Guillambo. La pregunta es hecha por Laura BB. Pero no es una pregunta, ¿no? Pues, como, no sé si sea un, un comentario más bien. No, Tal vez es un comentario sí. de Laura. So, yeah, more than a question, this is a comment. So, it's basically uh, suggesting that you will have to, it would be nice to have to take into account social information. Thank you. So we'll wait for Fernando. I have a question for Natalia while we wait for the clarification by Thank Fernando. You. He's typing, I think. Uh, Natalia, what was your, what was the most surprising finding of your research for you personally? So I would say the, the largest sizes in the, of the small uh, size species is Carususeli and the Neopterus in San Andres uh, because, well, I, I haven't found that in a previous study. So I think that is like the most interesting one. Okay, perfect. And were there any findings that were especially scary for you? <laughs> that one, <laughs> probably, because it's difficult to, you know, to kind of have an, an idea to explain that. So maybe that one as well. All right, perfect. So Fernando has just written another, uh, another phrase to clarify. So Fernando is asking, abundance often varies with body size. So abundance often varies with body size. And he says that usually larger species are less abundant. So he comments, it would be very useful to look at the correlation between size and abundance for all the sites combined mm -hmm. and within each site. Okay, okay, great, thank you very so much. That was a comment on top of the previous comment slash question. <laughs> Do you Thank have you any? Perfect. I think, okay. it, it, I think it can be related with the with one of the early questions that you got that you received that was related also with difference in reproduction among big versus small species. So I think both both kind of add to the same idea of maybe or maybe not. Fernando is also commenting like big fishes are also are always less abundant. So it's not always something related with high pressure. It might be also that they are acting synergically, but it's not the only reason. So I think the comment goes, both comments or both questions goes in the same direction. Yeah, but as we see like non, like the only species that show a difference in the abundance was Sparisoma video, right? So. Yeah, and he, here we getting another comment from Fernando, and he says that, yeah, fecundity is usually positively correlated with size. So, yeah. so yes. That it's, was the word that I, I couldn't find, yeah. 
Yeah, so it's, anyways, it's very, very interesting. I think that Scaros Iseri and Teniopterus getting bigger in San Andres, it's something con maybe, maybe or maybe not uh, con co-interintuitive, but maybe as you already suggested, uh, ecological exclusion perhaps or something can be, can be something that is happening there. Yeah. So I don't know if there are more questions. We we are not having Dana here, so you can guys make more questions. Ah, Dana is already there. Oh, Dana just arrived. Okay, looks like uh, Dana. So Perfect. Yeah, Dana, so I think you're in the. I don't see you, Dana, in the in the panelist. Are you a spectator? Dina Alejandra Velasco. Ah, you came in. Okay, perfect. Everyone, we're now moving on to Dana's presentation. Natalia, thank you so very much for your presentation and for answering those questions. Dana, I'm now moving you to panelists. Thank she you. Thank you so Natalia, much. Thank, thank you so much. Okay, we were, we, were, we were killing you with the questions while we were waiting for Dana. She was already there. <laughs> she was there. <laughs> this is the, yeah. Bye.